This is an example of the chi-squared independence test. We're going to do the critical value and the p-value very quickly though. Alright, so the scenario goes that a survey was done to see if there's a, an association between gender and what choice you have, whether you're pro-life or pro-choice. And the following is the table we found. 196 pro-life males, 199 pro-choice males, 239 pro-life females, and 249 per choice females. Right. So the first step is to always calculate the expected values. The expected values this time for the chi-squared independence test are the total of the row times the total of the column divided by the complete total. So we say the total of the row times the column divided by the total. Right. So for example, for the males, we would say 395 times the pro-life, which is 435, divided by the complete total, which is 883. So when you do that, we get 194.5923. And we'll put 194.5923. I'll do one more of these. So if we want to do the female pro-choice expected value, females total 488. Pro-choice total 448. Divided by the complete total 883. When you multiply that together, you get 247.5923. Alright, continuing, we also have for the male per choice, 200.4077, and for the female pro life, 240.4077. Alright, so they're all above 5, so we don't have to worry about whether our assumptions are met. First step then is to state the null and the alternative. The null is always that the two are independent, or that there's no association, the two variables. So our two variables here are our choice and gender. So choice and gender are independent are that there's no association between choice and gender. Either type of speaking is correctly is correct. The alternative then is the opposite, that they are dependent. Choice and gender are dependent. Are that there is an association between choice and gender. We're going to test at the one percent, so alpha our second step is 0 0.01. Step three is our chi-squared test value. Remember, just like with the goodness of fit, we find chi-squared by saying O minus E squared divided by E. O, remember, is the observed value, 196, for example. E is the expected, 194.5923. Then we subtract those, square it, and then divide by our E again, 194.5923. So, so when we do that, for the male pro-life, we get a chi-squared value of 0 0.0102. For the pro-choice male, we get 0 0.0099. For the pro-life female, we get point zero zero eight two and for the pro choice female we get point zero zero eight zero. Remember that the summation, the sigma just means we add up each of those. O minus E all squared divided by E. So there's four choices, so there's four numbers. We add that up and we get point zero three six three. Alright. Now our step four, if we're going to do the chi-squared test critical value, we have to know our degrees of freedom. 
The degrees of freedom are how many rows we have, minus 1, times how many columns we have, minus 1. And that doesn't include our totals, just the inside of our data. So we have two rows, male and female, two columns, pro-life and pro-choice, two minus one is one, one times one is one. So we're looking at degrees of freedom of one. Testing at the one percent, so that means our projection region is 1.01. .01. So we go to our table with degrees of freedom of 1, and we look up 0 0.01, and we see that that critical value is 6.635. All right, so our critical value is 6.635. Our decision then comes from whether 0 0.0363 is between 0 and 6.635, or is it above? Well, 0 0.03 is definitely close to 0. It's between, in our non-rejection region, so we fail to reject. All right, if we were to do, to do the p-value approach, again, we'd look at degrees of freedom of 1. We'd go to our table on the row of degrees of freedom of 1, and we'd try to find the number that's closest to the point zero three six three. We see that there's none of them that will be that small. The smallest one has an area of point one zero in the tail. So all we can say with our p-value of our fifth, fourth step is that p is greater than 0 0.10. The probability of this occurring is greater than 0 0.10. All right, our decision comes from whether this value that we just found that's greater than 0.1 is at less than 0 0.01. Is p less than or equal to alpha? Well, p is greater than 0.1 is that less than 0 0.01? No, it's not. So again, we would fail to reject. So then we just have to go to our interpretation. Whether we have the p-value or the critical value approach, we only have one sentence if we fail to reject. That is, at the 1% significance level, the data do provide sufficient evidence to conclude that choice and gender are not independent. Or you could say, at the 1% significance level, the data do not provide sufficient evidence to conclude that choice and gender are dependent. If we had rejected and we used a p-value, we would have said that they are dependent, that we have enough data, and then we would have to say the evidence against the null.